All right, guys. I've got a um, opening that I'd like to suggest for you as beginners and intermediate players. Um, previously, I, I did a video on mastering one opening where I suggested that the King's Indian defense setup or pit to King's Indian for black would be a good idea. So, for example, if d4, you can play a knight out, your opponent might grab play c4, and you do this relatively straightforward uh, bishop's fianchetto, so this Indian setup on there, um, and then into castle. And this is kind of solid, and it's it's pretty good. It's it's slightly dubious at the, at the top levels, it's not played an awful lot, and the main reason is that white has this massive control over the center of the board, whereas black's control is, is pretty minimal through this knight. And black's intention at some point is going to be to try and break through and challenge for the center in the middle game rather than straight away in the opening. And um, I mean, nevertheless, this, this, is, this is all pretty good. Uh, you, can, you can also play it to a degree against e4, but you need to play then d6, the pits, um, before you can then start with this, so that this prevents um, e5 hitting the knight too early. You don't want your pieces that you've just developed to be kicked straight away losing tempo. But now, um, what I'd like to suggest maybe for, the, oh, it's just something you might like to try out, is a an opening that's kind of similar to this, uh, particularly against d4 or even c4 openings, that's the Queen's Pawn opening or the English, um, which is the Leningrad Dutch. And my coach has been advising me uh, on this as, as a good response to d4, because I was looking for a, a response that's a bit more solid than like the England Gambit. And the Leningrad Dutch is quite similar to the King's Indian defense. So if you've played that to some degree, then this will be relatively familiar to you. So it would go like d4, and then you play the standard Dutch opening, which is f5. Now I know it's the f-pawn, and it's opening up this diagonal towards the king, but right now we don't have too much of a, a worry. Let's say um, white continues, c4 would be very uh, principled here, and again trying to get the knight onto c3. Then you play knight to f6, okay? And now should the e-pawn move and the queen wants to come out. She can't come here or here because the knight's covering those squares, so it's the pawn, okay? So let's say knight out here. You play g6. Uh, you can also play the bishop to g7 first if you prefer that. Um, let's say pawn comes out here. And again, you put this bishop on the same fianchetto square. And again, the idea is going to be to, um, to castle kingside. Okay, so this is very, very, very similar to the setup that we've already seen. The difference is this guy. This guy is on f5 instead of being all the way back here on f7, right? And um, I kind of like that. So if white should play e5 at any point, you've got the option to capture on, on e5, and it, now it says that black's actually, you know, certainly better off. You do need to think about developing your other pieces. I think, you know, a fianchetto of the light squared bishop in the Dutch often makes sense, particularly here, where you've got this danger pawn that could move and uh, have a discovered attack on, on the rook. But um, something that you may want to look into and explore. So let me share with you a game that I played this morning. Okay, so um, my opponent is from India and they're rated 1330. And they start with d4. So I play f5. Now we have f4. So this is like transposed into the bird's opening. Bird's opening start can start with f4. But this is a bit wild, okay? But anyway, knight to f6, knight to f3, g6, knight to c3, bishop g7, and now h3, I guess, just covering this square from the knight black castles, and we have e3. Now, b6, like we said, preparing the fianchetto of the bishop, because this bishop doesn't have scope down this line because of this advanced pawn on f5. 
Uh, bishop out with check. Now here I guess I could have played e6. Would have been perfectly good. Probably a better move. I just dodged out the way. I've, I've played less than a minute so far on the clock. And bishop d2. And now I do play e6 anyway. So I may as well have just played up on the last move. White now challenges the e6 pawn. And I ignore it because I figure that he can take. I recapture. He can't recapture with a bishop because then my bishop is also looking at that square if d7 captures e6. So I now push a6. And the point of this is to prepare b5 and try and embarrass this guy. So now we have d6. So he's pushed right through on there. Um, I simply capture it because it seems like a free pawn. And now I have a bonus extra center pawn. So I can now use that to push forward or even push forward with the e pawn then if takes, takes. And I've restored my pawn structure. And uh, remember white now has no d pawn. So all good so far. Now we have g4. I'm not too concerned about that. I decide to counter attack the bishop, which is a more serious attack. Bishop retreats. And now I slot my knight into this nice uh, outpost on e4. So I figure if knight takes, I've got pawn takes, and we're looking pretty good. Okay, so there we go. Exchange of knights. Bishop now comes back onto this diagonal, but there's not much uh, going on there. And it really invites b5, just kicking the bishop again. So I'm now gaining a lot of space now on the queen side of the board. Bishop retreats, and now I simply grab the knight. Okay, so this is the problem. Yeah, this is the problem. Missed that. Um, with the exchange of knights, I remember actually saying to myself, he can't capture with the knight. Why can't he capture with the knight? Because pawn recaptures and we have a fork. We have a pawn fork, okay? Uh, you can get out of forks like this if you, if you have a good counterattack. Say, for example, the bishop or the knight could move and give check or attack the queen or maybe a rook. Then... Um, I might need to spend my next move removing that piece. Now one of the attack pieces has moved, now the other attack piece could potentially move. Uh, there are no good checks or attacks in this situation, so um, I, yeah, I, I counter-attack the bishop here. So now he's got two pieces under attack. Um, can't save both. So he saves the bishop and loses the knight. Now we have a trade of, well, it's not a trade. Uh, pawn takes f5. Now. If you have not seen the video that we made yesterday, the uh, w where we've got seven or eight players playing against a single bot, you must, must watch that. Because we've got players rated from um, around 1,000 or just below 1,000 up to 2,500, all playing the same game as a team against the bot. And man, the, the insights that I got out of that, it's about an hour and a half long. Um, I, I got some real, real value from seeing the difference between what the kind of beginner and intermediate players and how we read the board and how we think and how we prioritize and how we come up with the candidate moves uh, compared to, we've got 1,900 and 2,500 players on there, to, compared to how, how they look at it, very, very different and extremely insightful. So I definitely... Um, strongly recommend that you check out that video. Okay, um, so one of the things that I got from that video, which was a suggestion from the the uh, master player who, who was on the call, was that if you very often get these situations in chess where there is a a threat. So, for example, here, pawn takes pawn. Okay, now. It's a bit of a threat. Now, most of us would just instinctively recapture. We would react and recapture the pawn, okay? But then, probably queen takes that, and now I've got a rook in with, with problems down there. I'd have to block it with a knight, yeah? Um, so, always be looking for, particularly when, when you are in a situation where you are inclined to react and just make a snap recapture or something like that. Always look to see if there is an alternative with that comes with more threat.
okay, more pressure on your opponent or that improves your situation more. And this is a really, really key thing in chess. You want every move to improve your position. Okay, so now here I spot queen h4 check. Now this attack here, potential, you know, I could lose another pawn. You know, whoop de doo that, that's, that's not too bad. But this, this is nice. The king can't go here because I've got a pawn there, right? Plus I may also save this pawn, right? I might even get a chance to just play bishop b7 and um, protect the pawn with a bishop potentially with ideas of an advance and a discovery on the on the rook like we saw just in the uh, short intro earlier on so king has to move now my queen comes in clearly my queen is threatening coming to g2 rook now comes across so i grab the pawn grab h3 with check okay um the rook can't rook can't block the check because it's covered by pawn and queen so the king now has to move back I move back with check, king moves back there, and now I decide to push the pawn, right? So king cannot take the pawn. Rook cannot move to h1, because queen will simply capture, and then we we'll trade queens. So the rook comes out now to g4. Now I dive in here. I'm, again, I'm defending the pawn from the king, and I'm maybe threatening to come here. Again, the rook can't block if I do that, because queen just takes. Okay, so now we have... A not particularly threatening half attack. I mean, it's just basically proposing a trade of dark squared bishops. It's like, okay, that's fine. So I grab the pawn on f5 now, but this is a few moves later than when I first had the opportunity to do that, but now it's, it's better because now <clears throat> I'm hitting the rook there, so the rook's going to have to do something. Uh, I'm not concerned about this trade of bishops. White now decides to trade bishops, that that's no problem. I'm actually five points up in material, so trades are all good for me. Queen now comes down with check, and I block with a rook. So I'd seen this, I'd calculated this. So now there is no good check, right? The rook can't capture there, pawn takes. Queen can't capture there, king takes. Queen can't capture there, it's covered by the bishop. My concern at this point is queen coming to d5, hitting this rook. Okay, now, um, for some reason, white now decides to sack the rook, okay? And I've got some options here. I can't recapture with a rook because it's pinned. I could recapture with a pawn, but I just figured it's safer to capture with the king here, uh, simply because there's there are no checks available to white right now. And I've still got this massive threat here, okay? So now the king moves out of the way, and now this is, I like this move, right? So pawn f1, promote to queen. The king is in a double check and actually has no squares whatsoever. So it, white is obliged to capture the queen. Um, now at this point, obviously I've got a skewer on the king. Queen h1, check, king moves away. Now. Critical moment. Take a sip of coffee. I spent some, I spent a bit of time on this, on a minute ten on this on this move. Clearly, there's a hanging rook, but my concern at this point, right, when you start to get to this point in the game, you need to be thinking: if I'm going to win this chess game, what do I? What has to happen? And one of the things that is very, very important for you to be able to win a chess game is not to lose it first. If you lose, if you get checkmated, it's all over. And um, rightly or wrongly, I decided that capturing the rook was not likely to be that instrumental in the game. I just didn't want, um, I, I basically, I didn't really want to come off this diagonal, right? Because I thought, look, if I can't get the rook there, White's got queen d5 attacking this rook. Yeah, I could block it with a knight, but then my queen's kind of stuck away, and I'd like to keep the pressure on white. So I decide to play queen g2. King comes back here, and now I dive into e4 and force an exchange of queens. Okay, give up the pawn, but that's fine, because now 
my material advantage. Now the queens are off the board, my material advantage should simply carry me through. However, it's not all over yet. King moves out of check to e4. I now develop my knight and liberate my final rook. So completing development on move 32. And now the rook comes in here, and this is very, very interesting because my first thought was centralize the king. Okay. Now, if I move my king here, rook g5, and I can't go anywhere on there. Remember, my king, my king's on this square, right? The rook's there; it's defended by the pawn. I can't go there because it's attacked by the king, covered by the king. And I can't go there because it's covered by the bishop. So I think that would actually be checkmate very well spotted by white okay but i would say equally well spotted by me so i move my king to h6 here we have rook h1 check king h7 okay and now if if the rook were to check me i can i can dive into the corner here i should be perfectly safe so now we have bishop d5 and this obviously walks into a potential um fork so do I want to take the bishop off the board? Yeah, I'll take the bishop off the board, okay? And now I can, because the the king has the king here, uh, well, it can't save the bishop. This is the problem. There are now two attackers on the bishop. So bishop takes d5, check. And now I grab the rook, and it's going to be all over. It's all over by the shouting. So here, bishop's defending the pawn, and boom. Uh, lovely checkmate in the end there. So... This is an opening that you might want to check out, particularly if you've tried out the King's Indian and maybe you suffer a bit from this lack of uh, central control. But throwing out e, uh, f5 first might be more to your taste, might be more to your liking. I'm certainly enjoying playing it. This is now going to be my standard response to 1d4 and also to 1c4. You can play it against the English as well, as you saw in a video that I posted uh, a couple of days ago about the English versus the Dutch um, I used the same opening there against 1c4 so uh, yeah give it a spin let me know what you think uh, thank you for watching please do like share subscribe all that good stuff and I'll see you soon